Hi, this is Nick Dawson, the editor-in-chief of TalkHouse Film, and you're listening to the TalkHouse Film Podcast. At the TalkHouse, we're big fans of Camille Nanjiani, who early in the year did an episode of this podcast with Michael Showalter. When Kumail went on Twitter recently to declare his love for Swiss Army Man, and then shortly after, Daniels, the directors of the film, hit the publicity trail for their new interactive short, Possibilia, the stars aligned to bring them together for a conversation. On a Friday afternoon in LA not long ago, Nanjiani dropped by Daniel Kwan's house. Kwan and his partner in crime, Daniel Shiner, make up the directing duo known to the world as Daniels. The three played video games, and then sat down to chat about Swiss Army Man, Possibilia, and a bunch of other stuff. A defining characteristic of TalkHouse podcasts is that these conversations often start where interviews end, and so the other stuff they get to hear is pretty fascinating. A hilarious discussion of the bureaucratic and insurance-related impact of action thrillers and superhero movies, Nanjiani and Kwan talking about the effect ADHD and anxiety have had on their careers and creativity, the perennial arguments Shiner and Nanjiani have with their respective partners, and... Of course, a bunch of stuff about farts. Just to warn you, early on in the conversation, we lost audio completely. So what you're going to hear for about a minute is a version stitched together from NSA surveillance footage and fan-recorded audio. Here it goes. Hi, guys. My name is Daniel Kwan. And I'm Daniel Shiner. Hi, Daniel Kwan. How are you doing, Daniel Shiner? I'm great. We have another guest here. Hello. Hello. Hey, I'm Kamel Nanjiani. How's it going, Daniel Kwan? How's it going, Daniel Shiner? I'm doing it's great. going great. This Thank is you. off to a great start. <laughs> this is we're, right. all, we're all smiling really yeah. big, so it's, this is a, it's good so far. We spent yeah. a bunch of minutes playing video games together before this. That's right. Yeah, we we have, wasted yeah. all our good anecdotes. I know. <laughs> we really did. Um, I really, really loved your movie, Swiss Army Man. Oh, wow. um, I, I truly did. And I was, I don't. We saw that on Twitter. Thank you for saying a nice thing on Twitter about it. Oh my it. god! Yeah. Oh, it's it's cool when like things. Well, did, I've been thinking about this recently. I've been like going back and watching a lot of like classic movies, you know, like Fellini and uh, Cinema wow. Paradiso and that kind yeah. of stuff. Just like stuff that I missed. And I think it's not true of all good art, but there's a certain subset of really good art that could only have been made by the people that made it. Totally. And I think it's evident. In, when you watch it, you're like, oh, only this person could have told this story. And Swiss Army Man, I feel like only you guys could have done it. Like, no, it, it wasn't one of those, like, we got to make it. Otherwise, someone else is going to make this movie. Yeah. yeah. There was, in, like, the contract negotiations when we were finding financing, they were, like, you know, debating final cut. And, like, we did not have final cut on the film. But we kind of, like... We were like, good luck. Like, if they try to take, <laughs> if they try to take the edit away, like, I'm just curious to see someone try because yeah. the movie was so crazy. You know, it, 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 we we kind of thought of the same thing. Like, we we could only we could make this. Yeah, but um, but not in like a, it's not it's not a cocky thing. I think I think we think of our ideas as like orphans. Like, no one else, no other creator would ever want to touch these ideas, and I think that's why we're drawn to them. That kind of makes something beautiful out of of every everyone else's trash, you know. So, yeah. So, yeah. Well, I, it's it's definitely a movie that like it's it's very hard to explain to people, which I think is very good. It it's it's it, it's a hard pitch, obviously. I don't know how <laughs> you guys so did that. <laughs> if you pitch that movie to the right person, it's the easiest pitch ever, you know. But what was it? It's like ninety nine percent of people would, would hate it, but the one person that this movie is made for, you know, like that pitch was actually pretty easy. Yeah, we would cater our pitch to the person. Like right, with, right. with Paul Dano, we said we wanted to try to make a movie that would start with a fart that would make you laugh, but like. Maybe we could make a movie that would end with a fart that would make you cry. <laughs> and then, like, that was our grand master plan. Like yeah. we can achieve that even for like one percent of the audience. Uh-huh. Like that's cinema history. Some, something magical, yeah. And like that was all he needed to hear. He was like, "Okay, well, let's work as long as we need to to make that happen." <laughs> to make the fart that'll make you cry. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And and at Sundance, there was one lady specifically who came on stage and uh, cried. Uh, and gave Paul Dano a hug. Yeah, so he must have felt, arms, yeah, he must yeah. have felt like oh. he made it. Well, that's what's interesting is that on paper it seems like sort of a high concept primacy movie, but when you watch it, it feels very personal. It clearly like you guys poured part to yourself into this movie. What are you talking about? It's <laughs> not made up. That was real. No, yeah. it, it, it's, it's kind of a, I think it's because we're so self conscious of our ideas. Like we're really nervous of, of what we're doing. We're like, oh shit. If we're gonna if we're gonna spend two or three years of our life working on a farting corpse movie, 
Um, we better make it as personal and emotional and, and grounded as possible. Otherwise, like we're wasting our life. You know, it's, it's kind of a, um, a, a weird um, reaction to the idea itself. And then it kind of, it creates this really weird um, combination of, of like uh, sincerity and just like uh, really uh, almost like mean humor. It's like, uh -huh. it's kind of mean to the audience. We're almost pranking them, but at the same time we're loving them. It's a really weird thing. Uh, I read somewhere someone was like, this movie is like one big fuck you to Hollywood, but also one big I love you at the same time. It's a really weird thing that I, I, I don't know. I think, I think we- uh, Cause we feel both those things. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I guess that, yeah, we, we're, we're like so mad about like generic movies, but then also like love some pretty generic movies. But also, I mean, and like what Hollywood puts out there or whatever. Yeah, the movie is kind of like a love letter to filmmaking at the same time as being like one giant practical joke. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh my God, we, we convinced Dan Radcliffe you know, <laughs> to be Potter. a dead body. Like, yeah. yeah, that's funny. I always feel like when I watch these generic movies and I watch a lot of movies and I do like a lot of uh, big um, special effects movies. I actually, oh, mutual totally. friend Zoe Kazan. Oh yeah, uh -huh. who, her and I would get into. I would, she would be like, "What did you watch this weekend?" And I would have watched some big dumb action movie. And she's like, "Why are you doing that?" I do. <laughs> she like would say those. that. <laughs> yeah, like, what's your favorite this year? Of the big dumb. Yeah, big dumb movie this year. Um, what's your favorite? I watch. You know, I watch all the, and I don't think these are big dumb. I watch all the Marvel movies. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I think Guardians of the Galaxy is the best of all of those. Oh, yeah. I really love that one. That one made me cry. I kind of love loved Civil War. It, like I was surprised. <laughs> I did not great. expect to love it. Yeah, he's usually uh, a hater. Actually. I, I yeah. do hate Marvel movies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I, one of my things with all action films is like um, the collateral damage they ignore. You know, like oh the God, like people true. dying, and the entire plot of the film revolves yeah. around civilians dying. Yeah. And I was just like, "This movie's for me." I was yeah, like, yeah. "I just loved that the entire time they were counting bullets and trying not to kill civilians yeah. and like freaking out if they even almost hurt." Like totally, you know. When a, I watch a like, stranger, when I watch like Bad Boys or something, and they're rolling down and they overturn a fruit cart, it's just yeah. like a funny thing. But I'm like, that's that guy's whole life. Yeah, his know, whole right? family. Totally. <laughs> or like on in that. Speed, they like they're crashing those cars, and you're just yeah. like the insurance claims like just like right. hundreds and hundreds of like there should be a movie that's just about like insurance paperwork after oh my a big God. superhero oh battle God, yeah and just like the heads that roll you just at all traumatize state. that oh yeah you know? yeah they're like it's worse than earthquake we're having to downsize you know, right? it's just like all of them like cursing Keanu Reeves one, one tutorial invasion would bring down the insurance like your entire infrastructure right yeah yeah wow that's, that's, the, bureau the bureaucratic implications of Marvel movies yeah. <laughs> There was so much, you know, potential there that they only just now began to tap. Aren't they doing a TV show about that kind of, it's called, like, normals? Is that what it's called? Uh -huh, uh, it's about, I think there's one about, like, civilians and, like, a superhero world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, hopefully they, they tap into the, you yeah. know, that kind of stuff. Well, I, I wanted to ask you guys, like, okay, so you guys clearly found each other, and uh, that's, it's pretty awesome. Obviously, you guys work great together, but I've also been thinking about, I um, have worked with writing partners, and... You guys obviously write together. What's that process like? Is there like a, a is there like a division of responsibility? Is there something like how do you guys keep each other honest or like what are your how how do you guys work together? It's a very yeah. vague question. Yeah, it's it's it. I think in order for it to keep working, it has to keep evolving. So like, yeah. uh, we've been trying to explain that for Swiss Army Man, but then even while in interviews talking about how we work later that day we like try to break we, those rules because we're like oh i'm sick of doing that same thing all the time <laughs> yeah um so it's, yeah it's kind of a hard thing to pin down but yeah I, I, the, 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 well no the answer we, we we've been saying uh at these you know these interviews is basically just like whoever's more passionate about something at the time i recently found out that i um i have adhd i spent my whole life not knowing that because chinese people don't believe in like mental disabilities um and so my whole life i was like pretty terrible at finishing anything. Like that was just my problem. Um, but whenever I was passionate about something, my mom would be like, okay, just go do that thing. Go do that yeah. thing. Cause at least you're doing something. Yeah. Um, and uh, basically that's kind of the only reason this works is cause I um, mean, like whenever I'm not feeling something, he'll do it. And then whenever he's not feeling something, I'll Great. do it. And it's kind of, his like- I'm a, his new mom. Exactly. Now, now yeah. whenever he gets excited about something, <laughs> go do I'm it. like, oh, Daniel, just thing. go right. You're doing a great Did job. Did you get on medication for it? Can I ask you this? Um, or is this no, 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 that's totally fine. I'm still working on it. Like I, 
I've, I've been trying to schedule a, a, like a like a just a preliminary. That's meeting the problem. For, if you have ADHD, you yeah. can't even get it together enough to go know, to the appointment. Right. I've been it, reading that on Reddit a lot. Of, like, <laughs> like on, on, there's like you know there's an ADHD uh, subreddit and like a lot of people are like like talking about how they can never actually schedule anything because of their own problem. It just becomes this like endless cycle. So you're not on medication. For not it. yet. No, I don't, yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't and, know what it will do. I'm really curious. Well, yeah. that's what I wanted to ask you because yeah. I, my family has high blood pressure. We all have high blood pressure mm. and there's really nothing we can do. Like at some point we have to get on medication and then you're on medication your whole life. Wow. But the medication that they wanted to put me on is beta blockers, which also is used to reduce anxiety. And I was like, mm. well, anxiety is part of my engine and I don't want to change how I feel, blah, blah, all this stuff. Wow. But I got on the medication and it's been great. <laughs> I realized I don't need to worry about every yeah. single thing. I can just worry about the things that I need to worry about. When did bring... you go on the medication? Yeah. Um, it, it actually... Like, has it been long enough to that you feel like, okay, my career is still intact? Or is it like pretty recent? Well, it was kind of a weird thing I did. Uh, so we did our movie that yeah. our friend Zoe's in. Um, called... It's called, right now it's called The Big Sick. Oh, but it might change. Might change. Okay. Um, I'm very excited about it. Yeah. I am too. I hope it's good. It's <laughs> hard to know. I, know this, so, I mean, this the pitch sounds amazing. The story itself is like really Again, beautiful. it's like a story that love or hate, only we could have told this story. Of Nobody course. else has told this right, story. Right, because it's your, it's your, it's it's your a, And it's story. very specific. Yeah. And it's the way that like I felt when I watched your movie, hopefully people will feel like when we, they watch our movie is like, oh, they clearly like put themselves into this movie. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So I started taking the medication um like a couple of weeks before shooting the movie because I wanted to see how it would make me feel and I was getting very anxious wow. about yeah. the movie. So yeah. through the whole movie, so it's been about three months I've been on this medication now mm-hmm. and it works great. I kind of, <laughs> maybe I don't care as much about stuff, but <laughs> I think I'm happier. I mean, that's great. What? A, yeah, that's amazing. It's, it's really funny that that thing that happens when you, uh, <clears throat> when you realize life can be better and then you're like, oh shoot, like I, I, I shouldn't go back, but maybe I like like I was I was thinking about this recently because now that our movie is done, like I feel like I'm a better person. I'm mean, just a better human being in general. Like I I sleep better. I'm like actually working out and eating healthy, and I feel like the people around me like I can actually like engage with. Is that them. because it's done or because it's so good? No, 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 no. You no, just no. feel <laughs> you're cool. just no, like it's resting because, on it's your because laurels. It's yeah. done. No, it's because it's <laughs> okay. done. Because, yeah, I mean, like this is this is I, I think this would happen on like small degrees between music videos, but now with the feature, you know, you yeah. spend you spend two or three years with this anxiety that you're talking about. Yeah. And it really changes you as a human being and the way you interact uh-huh. with par- at parties. You go to parties and people ask you what, what you're working on and you don't you don't want to tell them because you've yeah. been working on it for so long. Yeah. And you just become this like closed off human being. Uh-huh. Um, I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about because we're still in that phase. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Are you okay? <laughs> it's going to be okay. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take so more convincing. medication. Yeah. yeah. There you go. But um, that, that, that really is true. I was talking to Emily about this yesterday. When I was younger, I cared about like, by younger I mean like early 20s, teens, most of my life, I cared about like two or three things. I cared about my parents, I cared about grades, I cared about video games, and that was it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so my, when, I, when I was like in my 20s, home, my house was a shambles, it was horrible, because like, yeah. I didn't care. And now I was talking to my wife last night, and I was like, I love that I have like a nice clean house that I can like get energy and power from yeah, yeah. And, and like being a grown up and like getting all that shit in order does make you happier and allows you to do the things that you want to do more I think yeah. right I mean that's that's been my life every like basically do you think oh, sorry you keep going oh no I just got excited do you think that like if you'd had an organized house like as a 20 year old you would have drawn power from it or do you think it's like it probably would like it just suits you as a 30 year old like yeah. You know, like that's a good question because I've been feeling that, but I can't tell if it's just like me evolving or if it's like, oh man, I I I would have been better. You know, I think I would have been better. I yeah. will say, for through most of my twenties, I felt like my life was kind of chaos. I was having a great time, <laughs> but I was like going to bed at three, four a.m. I was getting right. up at seven a.m. for my job. I was like not sleeping. Like, were for- you living in L.A. or is this? New this York? was in Chicago. Oh, Chicago. That makes yeah. more sense. So I was yeah. doing stand-up comedy at night, staying yeah. out until the bars closed, coming yeah. home, going to work the next day. I didn't, like, get sleep for years and years and years straight. <laughs> and when I think back now, it's like, what a crazy... I don't even know if I was having a good time. I think yeah. I was just 
having a time, right. you know, like just lots of time. Yeah. I was having a lots of time. I was having so much time. Um, one thing I noticed about your, and I think about this because I was raised very religious Muslim and in Islam, like there's a big like mind body duality and everything totally. the body likes is bad and everything the soul or the mind oh, likes God, is good. Yeah. And well. so your, I, your, uh, this movie, and also I feel like turned down for what, it seems like <laughs> reclaiming the body or like, like the, um, just the, not just sexuality, but just the body, the farting, you know, all that stuff everything, seems to be yeah. a, uh, I, I love that. I, uh, yeah. I also grew up really religious. I yeah. was a, a non-denominational, uh, Protestant, but, uh, up until college, I was like pretty hardcore. Um, so yeah, that, that's that stuff definitely. Uh, all, all the all the the shame and the uh, and, and the uh, things that you repress that yeah. that kind of like uh, the moment that all went away. Again, it's kind of like you on meds versus you without the meds. Like the moment I was able to let go of all that like anxiety and and guilt, yeah. I was like, oh my god, life is like life is sweet. Yeah, you know, I I can I can I can do things that my body wants to do, or even do things that my mind wants to do that like. Um, and, and not have to like worry about it for the next couple of weeks and not think about it, not like dwell on it. And that was like a pretty exciting moment. But it was kind of like an unexpected <clears throat> revelation as we were making the film. Uh, yeah, we we started with just like uh, a farting corpse, like a man riding a farting corpse across the ocean as beautiful music plays. And we we're like, that's a funny way to start a movie. <laughs> uh, and what if what if we could take that and then make a good movie? And then we didn't know what that good movie would be. And it took us forever to start trying to like dig into the farts themselves for meaning. And be like, well, we can't we can't have like a meaningful huh. movie with farts on top. The, the the meaning has to come from the farts. And we were like right. searching and digging in there. And it like took us a like a couple years before like we we realized like a lot of our favorite moments all had like similar themes and we kind of like zeroed in and defined it as like shame keeps us from love. It was what we like wrote on the wall. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, but then we started realizing, like, oh wow, that's I guess that's why um, we were drawn to this in the first place. Is because yeah. like farts like make us laugh, but also like they like we're ashamed of them as filmmakers, as yeah. humans, as yeah. like intelligent adults. Like you're not supposed to like <laughs> talk about them. Uh-huh. Um, and I think a lot of it comes from like uh, yeah, the the unhealthy parts of the mind body. Uh, Duality, totally, and like where I'm from, the sexual repression is such a big part of it. And I do think that part of the result of the sexual oppression is the you know it can come out in sort of bad and violent ways. Totally, and totally. It, for me, and I'm still struggling with it. That thing, like I still like don't I don't like farts. Like they make no. me so uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so the fact that I loved your movie. Because I never like fart jokes. No. I never like fart jokes. But your movie, because it recasts what farts are, and it's like, it's really pretty special. But I, I still struggle with that. I think I think we're uh, we're excited to like move away from from like like you said, turn down for what and and um, this movie and, and a lot of our other stuff was is, is full of like strange um, celebration of immaturity and celebration of the body and celebration of things that you should be uh, ashamed of. And I think. Uh, I think we're pretty excited to move away from that now with, with you know just because we've been uh, we've been uh, working on it for so long yeah just, we at least want to like try something <clears throat> else watch it flounder go down in flames everybody get mad that it sucks and then we'll go back and, yeah, yeah, and make yeah, some yeah. more amateur <laughs> shit but well, uh, I think what happens is does this happen to you guys if there's like <laughs> suppose there's like it is kind of like therapy like so there's, if there's something that is an issue for you it bothers you say it's um if it's like a uh, fear of growing old or something mm-hmm. And then you put it into art and you work on it. And for me, sometimes I get sad. Like if there's something that bothers me and then I write about it and I confront it and I do it, I kind of miss, <laughs> I kind of miss it bothering me. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's, uh, I, I talked to my therapist about this. She always talks about how, because like, she, she works with a lot of like artists and, and creators and whatever. And she always talks about how like, clients are always afraid of losing their edge or yeah. losing, you know, like <laughs> yeah. they go to therapy and they lose the, the problem that made them so special in the yeah, first place. Sure. You know? yeah. Oh yeah. Like I'll pretty, take uh, happy life, bad art yeah. over good <laughs> art. Good art, no, sad life. Won't. I would, hands you down. You would take happy life, bad art over? Yeah. Really? We had we had but, fights about this. I'm the, the I'm, I'm the opposite. So yeah. I think, I think that's, we balance each other out. Like, wow. I, 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 yeah. I got, I got real mad sometimes. Like the movie got hard, like too hard for me at times. And I was just like, I don't care. I don't I don't care enough about the movie to be unhappy. 
it's not worth this. Wow, okay. And then Dan would be like, good art's worth pain sometimes. And I'd be like, well, <laughs> our, our, our friendship's in the balance here, man. Really? You want <laughs> you want a good movie? Because I'm almost out. I'm right. almost out, you know? Like, yeah, which was yeah. like a, and, but it's a really, I don't know the answer. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for me, like, happiness is kind of contingent on good art. So it, 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 it's a little bit more of a, like a, an Ouroboros. It kind of swallows itself. Um. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, I think the answer is the middle ground, you know, like that, yeah. like you do have to draw a line on both ends, you know, like you have to be willing to work real hard and, and, and have some sad nights, but you also like have to like take tabs on your personal life and make sure like totally. you're, you're not turning into a monster just to like make some movie. Also, part of it is, I think, that we have, like, romanticized the thing of, like, hurting for your art and all right, that, you right, know? Like, right. I think we've romanticized that a little bit, but... But, like, lately I, uh, lately I like, see so many of my heroes and they seem sad. Like who? Like, <laughs> Charlie <laughs> Kaufman just did an interview about being, oh, like, real yeah, sad and yeah. thinking he's a fuck-up. And, like, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, I mean, in some ways that's why his movies are so incredible sure. is because they come from this, like, deep personal place. But, like, oh, man, he hasn't found happiness and... In, in, in yeah. the success, yeah. Yeah, like he's like, he's done such incredible things. But it's also inspiring to see that people, who, when you look at people who you think, you, they have their shit together, they're geniuses, they're amazing, right, and they're like, right, right. I'm really bad. I'm like, oh, that, <laughs> that's, that's something. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm too. really bad, so yeah. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I guess being self-deprecating is fine. It's the, it's the like, people who make great art but are shitheads that scare me, where I'm like, I'm trying to like, collect heroes who I can look up to on and off, like their art and their life, Uh huh. you know? Uh huh. And then like, right. sometimes people fall off that list. Yeah. While we were, while we were writing Swiss Army Man, I started reading that book, um, Rebels on the Backlot. It's like a, basically an oral um, history of like- It's like a like, gossipy history <laughs> yeah, about um, like 90s movies. Like, oh, but, that but, sounds awesome. But the, yeah. specifically the directors who did a lot of like really like subversive stuff, like- Tar within the studio system. Yeah, within the studio system. So it's like Spike Jones, Tarantino, uh, Fincher. Soderbergh. Soderbergh. Um, and they're all just like- they're all just assholes. Miserable. Are they? And David Miser o. Russell. David O. Russell, especially. Yeah. yeah. But, like, <laughs> I mean, it's a gossipy book. Like they're 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 picking the anecdotes that are juicy, you know. But, but the, like everybody but Spike Jones, apparently, you know, has some pretty embarrassing gossip in this book. Yeah. 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 So you we know? obviously take it with a grain of salt, but still, it, it, it's it is an interesting thing where we I think we purposely try to fight that as much as possible, almost to the detriment to our work sometimes. Like. We want to make sure the people on our set are are f fulfilled and having a good time and, and enjoying each other's collaboration. And that, like for us, like sometimes that pri we prioritize that over like uh, like getting the day. So, so it's like sometimes even sure. if even if we don't have a, like enough time in the day, we'll still do like a fun camp warm up exercise after lunch to get people. You know, it's things like that where, we're, we're, where that that to us is like um, just as important as is finishing all the shots in the day. Um, Right, and I, I do think some of that actually does show in our work too. Like when you watch some of our work, people say that looks like so much fun to shoot, and we're like, yeah. it was, yeah, <laughs> you know. And, and I think I think that that is something that um, we're trying out. We're going to see what happens, and we'll see if it's a success on both ends. You know, if, if we can right. if we can foster a creative, happy environment while also making good work. Do you find that in like the comedy world that like you you're trying to like aspire to a certain kind of life or like there's pitfalls where you see like people succeeding but not in well, their own eyes my like generation of comedians it's interesting before us the thing of comedians was you know these guys who were like big drinkers and drug addicts yeah. and, you know a lot of it was like this rock and roll kind of comedian i heard and, about your crazy drugs <laughs> <laughs> i mean like you know like you like john belushi or yeah, like right. chris farley or like all of that stuff you yeah. know or a Sam Kinison or whatever, there were these like rock and roll truth teller comedians who were like living larger than life lives and all this. So my generation, the people that are my friends, um, were all like pretty well adjusted, happy, nice people who are really funny. Yeah. Um, so and I think about this a lot where it's like our like my like the, the people that I work with, everybody's like nice and not competitive. The hard thing about comedy, especially stand-up, is that it can foster a kind of competitiveness. Totally. Yeah. Where it's like, I want to be the best on the show. It's a little natural because you're just on your own doing it. But right. I think, I think <clears throat> for me, the biggest thing I've learned in the last 10 years of doing this is that what you guys are saying. It's like if everybody feels like they're working on something together, 
they're going to feel more, you know, I think the product is going to be better. Like, um, you know, when you're making a movie, when you're shooting your movie, people are bought into different degrees, right? Like for you, this is like your, your big shot and you want to yeah. like birth this movie. Yeah. And then for some people on the set, it's, it is going to be just a job. Right. But making everyone feel like they're doing something together as one unit, I think is very important. And I do think it leads to better art. It seems yeah. like that's kind of what like the meltdown tries to be the alternative to like the kind of like the the giant red velvet like back, yeah. backdrop like Comedy Central special. Yeah. It's just like it seems like you guys are all hanging out like it's a community instead of yeah a- totally. And our thing we're doing that show was when we were pitching it to Comedy Central, we were like, we don't we have a great live show. We don't need to make this a TV show. And so our thing was we book who we want to book, and when we book them. We don't ask them what they're going to do. If there's a great. technical thing yeah. they need from us, great. But right. I don't think Comedy Central has ever done a show. Like, every time I've done a set on TV, they will, you have to, like, do a whole, like, you know, you have to type out everything you say and they yeah. talk about every single thing. And they're like, you're going to say Tylenol here? Can you just say pain medication? That kind of oh, shit. Man. <laughs> so for us, it was like, that was our big, like, non-negotiable thing. And yeah. I think that makes the comedians feel protected too where it's like that's great we're, we're getting you because we think you're funny and we trust you so do do your thing do, yeah. do whatever you want yeah, yeah. Totally. and so i do like that meltdown has become sort of this community where people like just come and hang out too um <laughs> i watched uh possibilia oh yeah, yeah that's right yeah. Uh, that was really really cool um it what's the when does it come out like yeah. what is it okay oh, yeah, so yeah. for those that don't know i think it comes out next week so it'll probably it's probably out right now yeah. listener but it's uh <laughs> it's a for those that don't know it's an interactive short film that we made a couple of years ago actually before um, Swiss Army Man yeah. yeah uh but it's just now coming out and it's like a a a love story set in the multiverse and it's a couple kind of going through a breakup that splits into like uh the maximum number is 16 different versions of the exact same short film uh-huh. so it's it's interactive and you explore it and uh but it's basically like if you you did a um Choose your own adventure, but you never actually get a chance to uh, stay in one path. You kind of get are overwhelmed by all the options, and it kind of it's supposed to be like this frustrating, overwhelming experience. Did that happen? Was it frustrating and overwhelming, or just like pleasant and chill? <laughs> it wasn't pleasant, but yeah. it was exciting, and yeah. I really I did it a couple times, and uh, especially during the montage, like the montage of their history together, yeah, that yeah, was really yeah, cool to switch yeah. over and see like the different snapshots. That's kind there. of our favorite part too. Yeah. When we, once we yeah. finished it, we are like, oh, what if we could just, maybe we should have just made a whole movie that was just, just pleasant. <laughs> it was really no. sweet. Nice no, but I, I think you need, you need that hard stuff in order to make that pleasant sure. stuff. Sweet. The context works better that way. Well, and um, then there's, there's a couple things. One, the, the dialogue is the same the whole way through, right? Yeah. It's just yeah. the context and the, the geography is different and the yeah, delivery the is different. The action and the emotions and, yeah. and how it's done. Yeah. I thought that was really fucking awesome. Thank you. Yeah. It's like a weird deconstruction of, of like every breakup that you've ever seen, basically. Yeah. Like it's, it's supposed to be kind of this like strange, repetitive uh Nightmare, but you know, a hopefully relatable nightmare. Uh, and like at in, the end, it starts over. Yeah, I yeah, know, yeah. It's just like, yeah, all, yeah like all, a nightmare. Like a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. but also, We're really selling it. It's yeah. just gonna like fuck you up, man. Yeah, no, I, but, <laughs> Enjoy it, listeners. I, I really, really, uh, yeah, it was very affecting, and oh, cool. uh, I thought that montage was very sweet. But then at the end, the fight starts, and that bummed me out. Because <laughs> I think in relationships, most good relationships, I feel like you have the same fight. Like a my wife times. and I, we have the same. We we've been having the same fight for ten years. Yeah, yeah. My, we have two fights. My <laughs> partner and I just had our fight like a couple nights ago, like just our classic fight. Right. Do you want to oh. share one of your classic fights? I'll well, tell you mine. Well, um, my fight is always uh, one of the big fights is about something we talked about: uh, work versus family balance. Oh, yeah. And and um, for for a long time, when you for me when I first started like. Uh, getting work, it was very hard to say no. So I was taking on a lot of stuff. And I didn't have like, I didn't take pride in my house. I didn't take pride in anything but my work, you know, and I think you have to like situate yourself and take pride in different aspects of your life. And I think finding that um, was challenging and it's still a challenge. And that's something that we like, if, if I book something out of town for a week or something, then, you know, we it's just always a conversation as it should be because yeah. our relationship is, it's very, it's the most important thing. Right. For sure. Yeah. What's yours? That's, it's, it's a similar one. Uh, 
it, or that's always part of it, but it's, uh, it's my, uh, my girlfriend of 10 years, who's basically my wife, uh, uh, is like a very like smart, strong willed young woman. Uh, but like the house duties fall on her when work gets tough. So like very specifically, yeah. she's like, she get you know, she's like, I love cooking dinner. Like, I, and she's an incredible cook, but like, the obligation Don't of cooking assume dinner. I'm just going to cook dinner. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So like at a certain point you like start like accidentally domesticating your yeah, significant totally. other and, well, and totally. like every once in a while it goes too far and she's like, I am like a housewife lately and you're not noticing and it sucks and yeah. we have to like be like, shit, okay, okay, yeah. great. I need some chores. I need to like take care of life. I'm going to cook some dinner. Like, because, yeah. and, I, and I always try really hard to be supportive of her career and I think I'm very good at that but I forget that like you know saying you're supportive of her career and then neglecting house shit those are contradictory like yeah. I, I'm, I'm screwing up her career by it's like it, yeah it's, which is like and it's and it and it happened again and then as it was happening I was like no 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 what last oh no I'm saying I'm gonna get yeah. better and I already said I'm gonna get better yeah. like when am I actually gonna get better yeah it's tough because you do find yourself in these patterns like for instance this happened a few months ago, she made me breakfast, gave it to me, and then she was like, at least say thank you. And I was like, oh my oh, God, no, I'm such a that's monster. The worst. <laughs> but she's totally right. Yeah. The least I can do yeah. is just say thank you. So, yeah. so that was a big, it seems horrible that it was a big decision where I was like, all right, I'm going to say thank you every time yeah. she does something for me. But like, I, I, I sometimes I get uh, reminded of how not callous, but how thoughtless I could be. Like, for instance, for, for Mother's Day, oh, I sent my no. mom flowers and she cried. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm such a bad son that, like, doing the smallest gesture, like, yeah. moves her to tears. <laughs> oh, no. I am not doing my job right. Yeah. Do we all just live the same life? It just sounds like we're all just like... <laughs> like this, kind of, this goes back to what I was saying, though. Like, I'm a better human being when I'm not when I'm not working, when yeah. I'm not working on a film. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it is really... I mean, and it's one of those weird things where you, like, when we started out doing being directors, we're like, oh, we're never going to get personal assistance or anything like that. That's, like, bullshit. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll just, let's just make things, and that's awesome. But then, like, once you're in the middle of, like... A film, you you need one. You want one. You're like, I need someone to go do my laundry. I need someone yeah. to like, uh, like I had my, my so my my fiance is also a director. She just um, actually, I wanted to bring this up. She she directed an episode of Adventure Time. She did the stop oh, wow. the stop motion episode. I don't know if you saw it. I haven't um, seen it. But um, right when that episode was airing, we were uh, finishing up post on our film. Like so, we we were like uh, finishing the sound mix, and so I was going to miss her big screening party and everything like that. Uh, so I had to get, I had to get like our, uh, our temporary assistant to go like print out like uh -huh. images and, and put it out in frames and basically make a gift for me so that I could, you know, and like at, at the time I was like, this is insane. This is like, um, I'm outsourcing a, a thoughtful thing to someone else. But, you're using, but, you know, but, but it's, it's still like, it's like you never imagine you'd get yourself to that point, but then once you're doing it, you're like, this makes sense and this is the yeah. only way I can do it. <laughs> totally. It's really weird. Whatever helps your life. Right, yeah. Totally, yeah. totally. And she loved the pictures. She loved Huge them. hit. It was totally great. worth it. Yeah, um, yeah it, it, it was, uh, I'm, just, I'm just going to brag because I really liked them. They're really cute. Um, it's, it's just really classic. Like you, you take a screen grab from the actual film and then you, you take a screen grab of her storyboard and it just kind of stuck them together. Oh, and beautiful. Just, yeah. And that the, sounds cool. Yeah. All right, I think that's the time, right? Wow. Oh, yeah. what a podcast. We what could keep podcast. talking for hours. <laughs> okay, we prepared a musical number for the end of the podcast. Uh, but we're out of time. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Next podcast. <laughs> Thanks, though. Thanks, guys. Thank you so Thank much, you. man. This was great. Yeah, that was fun. This has been yeah. Talk House. If this has hey. been Talk House. Hey. <laughs> we were talking in his house. Yeah. <laughs> Talk House. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. This is Nick Dawson from Talk House Film, and you've been listening to Kamel Namjani and Daniels on the Talk House Film Podcast. This episode was engineered by Derek Olds and edited by Mark Yoshizumi. The Talk House Podcast producer is Elia Einhorn. For more filmmakers talking film and TV, visit thetalkhouse.com slash film. Subscribe to Talk House Film and Talk House Music Podcasts on iTunes and Stitcher, where you can find all our previous episodes. And while you're there, please rate and review if you can.